So I'll probably start then probably as uh, we do the Q&A, then probably we can have a quick uh, uh, intro and probably can just know who uh, is in the room. Um, so yeah, so we, this, the study is on the Kenyan SME adoption to digital economy uh, 2024. Of course, we're very much aware um, the, you know, the speed and breadth uh, at which uh, the digital economy and as well as, as technology is playing in terms of supporting socioeconomic development globally, as well as in Africa, of course, um, different continents, different countries or member states within Africa adopting uh, the use of technology uh, differently, uh, be it in public sector or private sector. Um, I think the big push that we've seen is uh, uh, adoption of technology from a startup perspective or using uh, innovation and tech uh, to be able to solve uh, societal challenges. Uh, the reason why uh, focusing on SME is important is because we still know that currently in Kenya as well as in Africa, SMEs play a critical role and are literally the backbone of uh, of the continental uh, uh, economy. So uh, uh, being able to support them in one way or another, or just being able to understand the challenges that they face and uh, you know trying to uh, be uh, able to solve them, um, you know, uh, uh, just uh, from the different stakeholder perspective uh, is is quite important. Whether as an ESO uh, government uh, policy, uh, uh, you know, CSOs, etc. Um, so that's the uh, uh, reason, of course, we have, uh, I will take you through a deep dive in terms of the actual objectives and, uh, and the reason why we felt that, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a study that we need to take up. Uh, this is our fourth edition of uh, uh, looking at uh, digital economy from an SME perspective. Um, so in terms of methodology, we were able to sample at least 165 SMEs across uh, 15 sectors. Uh, and in 10 Kenyan counties. Uh, so for those of you uh, who uh, are not from Kenya, Kenya has 47 counties, um, and we were able to just take a sample of, ideally a sample of 10% is uh, good enough based, uh, based on, uh, uh, on you know, uh, best practice, which would have uh, uh, given us around 4.7 uh, uh, counties, but we decided to go for 10 counties. So these are the sectors that uh, we were able to cover, and these are the counties that we, we were able to, to do. Uh, the methodology uh, relied on random sampling. So it's not like we were uh, you know, very specific to people that we wanted to target. We just uh, broadcasted um, uh, the survey, and of course, uh, through our own database, we were able to reach out to uh, uh, different SMEs across, uh, across, the, uh, across these sectors. Um, so yeah, so the, this, uh, that's basically our methodology. So in terms of background, of course, uh, as we look at digital economy, we have to look at it from um, a national development pl pl plan perspective. So of course, in Kenya, we have Vision 2030 as uh, as the, as the overarching uh, uh, long-term strategy for Kenya, which is broken down into what we, what is called medium-term plan. So we've uh, gone through medium-term plan one, two, three, and currently we are under mid uh, medium-term uh, four which uh, falls squarely within the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, administration, uh, which is the current government. Uh, so looking at the budget policy statement, um, again, um, uh, uh, just uh, so that you know, uh, the budget policy statement is a very important document because it's the document that is used by government in terms of budgeting. So at the budget policy statement, you can take it as, is almost like a, 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 a program of what you intend to do. And then, of course, you're able to allocate uh, funding or budgets to it. So this is a, is a critical document that the government uses. It's a critical strategic document, document that the government uses to be able to uh, support uh, socioeconomic development within the country. So if you are to look at uh, the budget policy statement, Vision 2030, we see a, a, a focus on, uh, on technology and uh, just the digital economy. Uh, so the current government is as focused on uh, five key areas, uh, of course, uh, supporting MSME, which is very important. A digital super highway and creative uh, industry, which is uh, where, where innovation as well as startups fall. We have agriculture as well as uh, housing and healthcare. So uh, we can see that this particular uh, study or this particular report can actually be able to support uh, M, uh, the, the programs around MSME as well as the digital super highway. So it, it, it's just a question of just almost giving like alternative policy position in terms of how do we uh, support SMEs. Of course, we have other ways, capacity building, access to finance, etc. Uh, the focus of this is just to unpack um, uh, uh, digital economy and see what are the needs of, uh, of SMEs in terms of them being able to play a bigger role and, of course, increase their value um, if they were to uh, adopt some, some aspects of, uh, of technology. Uh, 
So of course, uh, like I mentioned, SMEs are the backbone of Kenya's economy. The numbers are out there. Uh, they employ over, eight, over 80 percent annually of new jobs uh, uh, within the economy. Uh, they contribute 33 percent to GDP. Um, they constitute over 98 percent of all businesses in Kenya. So SMEs uh, literally are, 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 are very important to the economy, and we need to find ways uh, using data to, uh, to be able to support them uh, and ensure that the, the different stakeholders are able to uh, you know, fine tune or tweak uh, their interventions to ensure that it really resonates with SMEs. Uh, so of course, we know the, the emergence of e-commerce across the continent uh, is growing. Uh, it's still nascent, but it's growing. Uh, the penetration is not as, as such. Uh, looking even at formal retail uh, uh, is still at around 20% or thereabout in Kenya. Um, so we uh, there is an opportunity for 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 uh, for Kenya and for African nations to really uh, leapfrog SMEs to be able to take advantage of uh, digital tools for them to be able to access market. So I always say that uh, at the root cause of the challenges that SMEs face outside of policy. Uh, is always access to market. Um, you can try solve access to finance, but if you don't solve access to market, then um, you know you 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 might you you might uh, end up stick, uh, being in a in a in a in a rat race. So access to finance and especially uh, the the continental free trade area is 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 an is a is a is a new uh, playground or field that SMEs can be able uh, need to be able to uh, access. So uh, again, if you're able to unlock uh, uh, digital tools, uh, we believe uh, or we hypothesize that we can be able to support uh, SMEs to uh, you know, uh, trade uh, across the border efficiently, uh, export to other uh, African nations uh, more efficiently and effectively. So it's just a question of asking ourselves what types of tools uh, would, uh, would work to ensure that SMEs are able to really take advantage of, 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 of the tools that, uh, that are currently there. So of course, in terms of objectives, we just wanted to understand basically the landscape in terms of what is the state of play of adoption of uh, digital tools by SMEs. Uh, are they how uh, how prepared are they in terms of um, you know uh, leveraging on emerging technologies on AI, etc. Uh, do they have the skills? Uh, are there challenges? Are there programs that they think government and other stakeholders can be able to um, you know put in place to ensure that they're able to prepare themselves? Uh, to be able to access these markets uh, leveraging on technology. Um, so that's uh, basically we had around uh, nine or 10 objectives, but generally it's just to understand the, the, the landscape. Um, so the first question we asked was uh, turnover, uh, just to be able to uh, get, see um, where, you know, in terms of turnover, where they sit, uh, because we believe that there is a direct correlation between the turnover performance or revenue performance with you being able to invest in digital technologies. So just wanted to understand that. And of course, uh, looking at this uh, based on the sectors that we were able to uh, look into. Uh, and generally, it's not, it's not news. I'm sure it's not news to most of you. We know that um, SMEs is an acronym of, of micro, small, medium enterprises. And of course, the MSME Act in Kenya 2012 um, has a definition in terms of um, the um, based, uh, definition based on turnover, as well as uh, number of employees. So based on our survey, we saw that 63% of SMEs uh, posted turnovers of less than 5 million, um, which is um, typical uh, for, for Kenya, and 37% uh, uh, doing between 5 to over 30 million. Um, so that's basically the state of play. Um, uh, nothing uh, interesting there. Um, the second question we, we asked was uh, the digital technologies adopted by SMEs in the last 12 months. So this is uh, the, between the, uh, the financial year um 2023 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. and you can see here that the the the, the, the technology or uh, tool that smes have um adopted uh, mostly is uh, digital marketing and of course uh, it, it's 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 obvious that you know you are looking for technology that can uh, help you uh, access uh, or increase your, your bottom line or increase your revenue so digital marketing, of course, uh, became something that SMEs have surveyed, indicated that was most used. Uh, we have a website, uh, uh, as also as, as a tool that SMEs are seeing is very important to them. We have e-commerce platform, we have data analytics, we have cloud computing, as you go, um, as, as the last one. So we can see the, 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 the trend here is there is a, a high adoption of technologies that have a high correlation with um, either acquiring new customers or just being able to, uh, to make sales. 
And as you go uh, towards the bottom is uh, tools that can uh, you know increase your efficiency, productivity, etc. So um, if you have to look at um, a GSMA, uh, we looked at GSMA as uh, in terms of report, the Mobile Innovation Report. We still uh, in Africa, we are still uh, uh, far behind if you have to compare with uh, with uh, with other continents. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, around 100 million, uh, 180 million people in sub-Saharan Africa, roughly 15% of the population who live with uh, an area with no coverage. And we have some 50 plus who are in, in a coverage area but still cannot be able to access, um, you know, the internet and, uh, and, and broadband. So it tells you that we, there's still a long way so that we have a, 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 small, a, a big percentage who uh, are not, have not, uh, broadband has not reached. And we have those, uh, almost a majority where the broadband is there, but they still are not able to access um, uh, broadband. So this tells you that there is still a, a significant opportunity um, for, 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 for stakeholders either within telco to be able to uh, increase this coverage, as well as try to solve those uh, socioeconomic challenges that uh, stops um, you know, um, uh, residents and citizens from accessing uh, uh, internet. With if, if uh, for instance, we were to increase that fifty nine percent to uh, or reduce it to around uh, ten percent and have at least either eighty ninety percent of the population accessing broadband, that it means that uh, that uh, and would allow SMEs to get um, or, or reach out to a, a, a bigger constituent, and of course, they can be able to um, increase their, their revenues. So again, just comparing uh, with India, just so that we have a bit of balance, we also we also see, um, uh, you know, based on a study by uh, credit rating information services in India, uh, indicating that even in India, SMEs are also um, uh, adopting uh, basic tools such as Microsoft Office, email, WhatsApp. You can see this is different um, um, if you have to compare that to Kenya, uh, growing online presence, which is very similar to Kenya, as well as uh, uh, digitizing, uh, which is basically uh, looking at ERP, et cetera, which is very similar to uh, data analytics as well as, as cloud computing. So that uh, is a good comparison and indicates that there is a real need for uh, use of technology in terms of supporting uh, uh, businesses. What we didn't, what we didn't ask uh, basically is a deep dive in terms of uh, the specific uh, di uh, marketing to, uh, digital marketing tools um, that uh, SMEs uh, were, were, were using. But what we, uh, we uh, the initial feedback that we received is WhatsApp is a, is a critical uh, tool for digital marketing uh, for a lot of uh, SMEs where in Kenya we have a lot of them uh, operating within trade. Um, so in terms of adoption, so again, the next question we asked was uh, what degree, uh, uh, you know, what what stage are you adopting? Um, as an SME, are you adopting uh, uh, digital tools? As, as you can see here, we have 44% 40, uh, were saying uh, they're at an early stage. And uh, by this, it means that uh, ideally they don't have sufficient resources to be able to, uh, you know, uh, use or uh, buy or implement digital uh, technologies, dig digital tools. So they, we have limited resources, we have low sales, and we have very few employees. Uh, so those are the early stages who are at 44%. We have developing who are at medium resource, um, as well as mature, which is not uh, a big a big percentage, it's around uh, 15%. So you can see over 80% are either early or developing. So with the major challenge being uh, 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 a lack of a lack of resources. Uh, looking at India as uh, in terms of correlation, uh, maybe just before I go to India, we, with ex uh, if you have to look at the sectors, uh, the sectors that uh, use technology from the get-go are either based on ICT, media, as well as tourism. So these are uh, SMEs within these sectors uh, who, are, who are, you know, how are, technology is not an option. They have to adopt. You're in ICT. I mean, uh, you can't be in ICT and still not use technology. Same for media, I think, because of use of, uh, you know, uh, the internet and, and, and the likes, as well as tourism, I think uh, that is, 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 a, is at the core and the backbone of, of, um, of these types of businesses. So with the exception of, three, of these three sectors, uh, the, the rest, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the hypothesis of low resources uh, meant that they were very early in terms of adoption. So looking at India, again, the same, uh, something very similar is happening. We see... 47% uh, of micro enterprises and 53 of small uh, were able to adopt some form of um, of digital technology. So it tells you that uh, again, it's not a it's not an African or Kenyan phenomenon that um, you know uh, SMEs are, are trying to get on board uh, on this ship of of using digital tools to be able to um, um, support their growth. 
So what are the main drivers of SME adoption to the digital technologies? I think it's very similar to the, uh, the first slide that I shared is we, they need to be able to access market. So digital tools are, are viewed as, as, as gateways uh, to be able to access uh, um, new markets, both local as well as export market. Number two is innovation and competitiveness, just trying to uh, develop a competitive edge uh, by using digital technologies, either by, you know, through, uh, you know, using analytics, uh, using, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, ETC, social media, just to be able to, uh, um, you know, create a, a, a value proposition or a communicate a value proposition uh, to your target audience. We are looking at efficiency. Uh, data driven by uh, making decision uh, customer experience just to ensure that the customer experience is improved uh, improved communication we see um you know uh, social media being a cheaper option uh, as compared to legacy media in terms of uh, marketing and, and, and advertisement as well as uh, lastly we see cost management so i mean if you're able to uh, use uh, tools uh, it, it means you're able to uh, say for example uh, reduce on your headcount uh, it might not be a good thing for the economy, but at least from a business perspective, you're able to uh, you're able to uh, reduce your cost. So, of course, we can see a direct uh, relationship between um, revenue uh, um, and and uh, digital technology in terms of appetite. So, the major driver for uh, adoption of uh, of digital technology, you can see access to market, which of course is related to um, revenue being um, at the top. Of course, um, uh, the other advantage of um, digital tools is the co the customer acquisition cost is also reduced. So what uh, that basically means that you're able to get our, um, you're able to target and acquire many customers using uh, maybe say for example Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, as opposed to maybe uh, you know going out to advertise below the line, moving from one road or one estate to the next or one country to the next, trying to get um, uh, new customers. So that uh, was uh, quite insightful. So uh, factors driving uh, available digital infrastructure satisfaction. So we have uh, different people or different stakeholders that are providing services uh, to, uh, to, towards SMEs, uh, you know, from data centers to uh, internet providers. I mean, these are the people who are building the infrastructure or have the foundation that SMEs can be, be able to use, um, you know, for, 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 for their operations, for marketing, et cetera. So the question we're asking is, uh, what drives your satisfaction to, uh, in terms of you being able to either uh, take up some of these services or, or or not? So ease of use and setup or uh, and setup user friendly onboarding. So again, if you look at the literacy levels of entrepreneurs, is maybe uh, from a business perspective or from a business management perspective, is not so, is not so high. So any provider who's either offering internet cloud. Uh, data analytics, et cetera, it has to be uh, something that is very easy for uh, an entrepreneur to be able to understand without uh, too much jargon. So but that is something that really uh, SMEs are able to appreciate. Value added services, so that it's not just internet, but you're able to offer other services. Remember, uh, some of this uh, language, some of these tools are, are, are very new to a, a lot of SMEs. So if you're able to uh, give them value in terms of uh, not only maybe for providing internet, but also uh, showing them that, you know, you can be able to use cloud, you can be able to use analytics, et cetera, et cetera. Being able to show that and maybe uh, costing it appropriately uh, is something that SMEs appreciate uh, highly. Uh, ability to easily scale up and down in terms of resources as per changing business needs. Um, of course, uh, you know, based on different trends uh, and, uh, and you know, different circumstances, um, you find that as a business, you either have to um, upgrade or, or, or even downsize. So having a, a service provider who is able to adjust based on, on uh, you know, the, the, the dynamics uh, within the, uh, the business environment is also very important. So if I'm able to, uh, say, for example, I have two staff, can I be able to get a package that allows me to access these digital tools when with two staff? Um, if, uh, say, for example, I'm fortunate enough to grow the business to five, or to 10, can I be able to, um, um, you know, can you be able to adjust uh, based on that? And if in case things go on a downturn or uh, uh, business takes a nosedive, then again, um, again, you are able to adjust around the same quality of service. I think that's obvious, uh, service reliability and consistency. Um, and we've seen, uh, you know, this, especially within uh, the ISPs or internet service providers in Kenya, um, you know, there are some who are not as reliable, some are not consistent. So you'd see that SMEs would, would really highly, highly prefer, you know, uh, service providers who are very consistent and very reliable in terms of their 
their um, uh, services. Um, you, you'd, you'd imagine that uh, pricing, uh, even for us, we imagine that pricing would be the first thing. So uh, you can see that, uh, you know, despite uh, SMEs going through challenging times, uh, uh, competitive pricing is not a priority. It's a question of being able to get very good services. Um, and lastly, we are looking at security and data protection, which would be a concern for us because, again, price and price and, sec and security should be should be top. Uh, but again, uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, the um, the SMEs were able to indicate. So, looking at uh, you know literature review uh, from World Bank, we know digital economy has a strong correlation with uh, uh, social economic development. So, the more and and of course, this is corroborated with the. Um, the science, uh, science, technology, and innovation strategy for Africa under the African Union, which uh, is advocating for member states to, uh, you know, to adopt more digital tools, digital technology, from a public service perspective, but as well as a, as from a private sector perspective, uh, uh, which of course has a, a correlation in terms of being able to create jobs, uh, ensuring the economy is uh, is innovative. Uh, there is a lot of research and development, and of course we able to, we we will be able to solve some of the challenges that we face as um, as, as a continent. Uh, but of course, in Africa, we still suffer from low infrastructure coverage, access to quality, affordable, and mobile connectivity challenges. And I think I had mentioned this uh, through the GSMA report, which indicated that around 15% of, um, you know, of the population of around 180 million are not able to access um, uh, broadband and uh, another 59 plus percent um, can, can are covered but are not able to, uh, because of various reasons, are not able to uh, access these services. So we still have challenges around the same. And the question is, um, how can we um, uh, be able to build this ecosystem, lay the foundation that then allows not only startups to thrive, but also SMEs to be able to take um, advantage of, um, of this. So um, of course, um, the, the challenge that has been posed to us becomes uh, an opportunity. Uh, for the different stakeholders to find ways or innovative ways of ensuring that, you know, uh, access to broadband is 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 done, uh, and as well as being able to address some of those socioeconomic challenges that individuals face that uh, uh, does not allow them to be able to access this. It could be that uh, maybe the price of maybe broadband is um, is being sold at wholesale. Is there a way in which we can be able to? have, uh, you know, uh, what we call a Kadogo economy uh, type, where, you know, you're able to sell broadband in small small pieces. Um, could we deploy maybe Wi-Fi in a village? I don't know. I mean, just it poses for us a challenge for us to be able to, um, um, to, be able to, to address that, uh, either using solar ETC. So again, this is a challenge to uh, uh, stakeholders who are within telco to be able to ensure that that uh, basically happens. We need to be able to deal to build more data centers, uh, data center infrastructure. Uh, we can talk uh, currently. Maybe the conversation is around uh, artificial intelligence. Um, you know, ChatGPT and all these uh, AIs, etc. We can say we can say all we want, but if we don't build the the foundational infrastructure, um, then probably we might not be able to reach where maybe the the, the West or the global North has reached. Uh, we need to be able to build um, data centers, and of course, we know the the, the foundation of AI is uh, is uh, large amounts of data. Um, our data in Africa again is maybe is offline, is unstructured. Uh, so we need to, uh, of course, uh, through collaboration or etc., um, uh, build uh, data centers across across Kenya as well as across the continent. Um, one of the things that uh, was also raised by the International Tele Telecommunication Union is that uh, there is a lot of misalignment uh, around pol uh, around policy, uh, specifically in uh, in uh, in East Africa. Of course, this happens across the continent, but there is a, the connectivity connectivity regulation environment is very different. So, if you go to the regulation or the uh, the regulatory environment in Tanzania, uh, in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Somali. All the way to Nigeria, etc. It's uh, you know as a, as as an investor who wants to invest within in, in the telco, and you want to be able to build um, uh, infrastructure, seamless infrastructure across East Africa, you are suddenly uh, you suddenly encounter different regulation, different compliance regimes. So if that can be aligned, um, uh, that would greatly uh, allow investors to be able to seamlessly invest across a, a regional economic block or across the continent. So um, either at the ESC uh, uh, level, uh, that alignment can, needs to be done. Um, and of course, once you do the, the regional economic block alignment, then probably can be able to do it at either COMESA as well as, as at an African level. 
stable and accessible electricity is also something as an infrastructure that need, we need to solve. We need to solve for, and of course, this is uh, part of the challenges that uh, maybe affects also broadband coverage. So we need to be able to have stable and accessible electricity, not only in major towns and major counties like Nairobi. We need to have, you know, um, a stable and accessible electricity um, in Garissa, in Mandera, uh, Marsabit, etc. And of course, this can apply across different um, um, uh, member states in Africa. So level of preparedness in terms of adoption of emerging technologies, and of course, this is when you talk about emerging technologies, of course, we are referring to, you know, Web3, AI, blockchain, etc. So we can see around 69% are saying they're not prepared, uh, which is uh, which is not bad, but again, it's an opportunity. Some 27% uh, uh, were not sure. Again, when you talk about emerging technologies, it's not something that um, um, all of us are uh, uh, aware of or know the advantages uh, and the opportunities that lie in. Uh, we have close to around 7%, which is 4%, sorry, uh, who are saying they're prepared. And of course, if you look at um, the sector focus for this is uh, either tech-based uh, SMEs uh, or media-based uh, SMEs, as well as uh, uh, SMEs within the tourism sector. So those are the exception, but the rest uh, indicated that, you know, they are still uh, not prepared as such. So it is not a, a Kenyan only um, uh, challenge. Uh, if you are to look at uh, you know South America, if you are to look at Asia, looking specifically at India, it is something that a lot of SMEs and a lot of governments are grappling with, uh, which is um, uh, more reason uh, for us to be able to uh, uh, study this and try to start looking for solutions. So we can see uh, the World Economic Forum uh, report is, is indicates that you know SMEs around the world are struggling uh, to embrace emerging technologies. Uh, which is which uh, is characterized as the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, although evidence indicates that you know um, if you're able to invest as a government, uh, supporting SMEs to be able to adopt technologies, there is a, a, an upside of a high return on investment. And uh, we have a, a good example of uh, uh, Brazil, uh, which uh, did a project with the with the World Economic uh, Forum uh, around supporting uh, SMEs. Uh, in manufacturing to start using smart devices and sensors to modernize operations. And we can see that uh, based on that uh, pilot project, there, there was an average of 192% return on investment and a 21.6% increase in operation efficiencies. So it means that um, it's, SMEs realize that uh, they, there is an opportunity or potential to be able to uh, leverage on emerging technologies to improve uh, their business, but they cannot do it alone. So uh, part of um, the um, uh, resolution or recommendation from this study is we need to be able to do a couple of things um, as stakeholders. So by we, it means that, you know, the different stakeholders, academia, uh, ESOs, uh, government, et cetera, we need to be able to uh, support SMEs to be able to adopt emerging technologies. And also, of course, this is one of the many examples that are, are out there, uh, which um, uh, is credible evidence um, that if, if the more we're able to, um, uh, push our SMEs to adopt uh, base, from basic technology to emerging technologies. They're able to have um, a better return on investment. They're able to build resilience. So what should government do or should, what should stakeholders do? Raising awareness on emerging technologies and potential benefits to SMEs. A simple thing, as simple as, uh, um, you know, chat GPT. How can we be able to, uh, you know, can we be able to develop programs that can sit down with SMEs and just show them, okay, look, there's this tool. This is how we can use it. If you look at this particular slide, our, our uh, graphics team were able to use AI. Of course, you can see this picture is 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 uh, AI driven, is AI generated. So of course, we, and this is a, this is something maybe that would have taken the designer maybe an hour to do, uh, but now he's able to do it in ten minutes. That means that he's able to get more work uh, or he's able to pile more work uh, within us uh, within us as a specific period of time. So can we be able to develop uh, programs that uh, is able to uh, showcase or take stock of the different uh, techno emerging technologies that there is outside of WhatsApp? Of course, WhatsApp everyone is using, but outside of WhatsApp, can we be able to uh, look for other tools that can be able to support um, SMEs to be able to uh, you know, uh, use for their own efficiency, for their own businesses? Uh, it could be uh, you know, uh, online accounting tools. It could be a chat GPT. It could be, I mean, there are many... Uh, technologies that are out there that I'm sure can be able to um, 
support SMEs. So this is something, an initiative that can be taken up either by government or for by ESOs in terms of their program. So, um, you know, as, as part of your marketing uh, program or product development program, I mean, you can be able to um, uh, incorporate some of these tools so that SMEs are able to, um, to use them. Uh, we need to be able to provide expert support to SMEs through startup SME partnerships. Um, so again, SMEs are traditional in nature. They have a defined business model. Startups, on the other hand, are using uh, innovation technology to be able to solve problems. Can we be able to have programs that links uh, uh, startups with SMEs so that, uh, say, for example, you want to build a website, can you be able to get a, a young entrepreneur or a young techie to be able to support you to do that? Um, you don't have to have the competencies around the same. You want to do analytics. Um, you know, you have, uh, you, can you be able to build a CRM or a customer relationship uh, system? Um, can you use that data to be able to improve your business? And again, we have a good example in Kenya of Sasakazi, a program that links tech professionals to business, uh, to businesses. Uh, this was funded, uh, was supported by UK te Kenya Tech Hub. So again, these are the uh, some of the innovative ways in which we can be able to support uh, SMEs adopt technologies. Uh, can we be able to provide financial support to SMEs? And India has a, a, a good uh, is a good case study of India's emer emergency credit line uh, line guarantee, as well as raising and accelerating SME performance uh, program. So, you can we be able to give SMEs uh, financing for them to be able to use and adopt technology? Um, you know, uh, getting an ERP is not a cheap is not a cheap affair. Um, again, can we be able to uh, you know find innovative ways of financing or even getting partnerships uh, with uh, you know big tech, uh, Amazon's and the likes, um, uh, Microsoft to be able to support uh, SMEs in terms of let's say for example giving them cloud credits, um, you know um, give them being able to access um, you know uh, large data sets for them to train whatever models that they have. Again, different ways in which government and um, and private sector can collaborate are around financing um, uh, or allowing SMEs access financing or even the tools directly uh, for them to be able to adopt uh, some of these uh, emerging technologies. Of course, providing technical advisory is very important, and this can be done either through ESOs um, in terms of a program that specifically focuses on um, supporting SMEs to be able to understand uh, some of these um, emerging technologies. So those are some of the case studies that we saw around around the same. Correlated to that is a, a level of employee digital skills. So we can see, um, uh, again, this can be uh, relative. It depends with how you'd want to handle this. Someone would say, I'm, I'm, I'm above average or I'm average in terms of digital uh, skills because I know how to sell on WhatsApp or I can be able to create a profile on, on Facebook. Again, this question was not necessarily looking at emerging technologies, but was looking at generally what's your feeling in terms of uh, digital skills. So majority were, were on, 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 on average. Um, so talent is very important, um, um, generally, just if you are to blow up uh, that question. And uh, it features as part of uh, uh, the Science, Technology and Innovation Strategy for Africa 2024, which is um, an AU um, um, strategy uh, that um, um, enumerates what needs to, what member states need to do to ensure that they're able to prepare themselves better to uh, leverage on on uh, technology for social economic development. So, uh, being able to develop tech talent is very is very important. As has been highlighted on, on the policy on the strategy document. Of course, we have enabling policy collaboration infrastructure etc. So what are the key recommendations uh, for a country? And of course, this can apply across uh, different uh, countries. So what key recommendations uh, can Kenya adopt in terms of developing digital talent? Of course, on the high end of the spectrum, we have you know your Moringa schools, we have your cutting edge um, uh, tech-based um, and tech-only uh, uh, training uh, organizations. But you need to be able to develop a, an entire pipeline of, of, of talent. Uh, look at it uh, maybe from a football perspective. Uh, you know, you need to develop a national team. A national team only has maybe 12 or 20 players at maximum, and they can only play maybe for three, four years. So you need to be able to ensure that you have continuous talent that you know starts from the grassroots all the way um, up to a national team. So the same has to happen for, for a country. You need to be able to look at the full spectrum in terms of what are the basic um, um, you know, foundational skills that we need to build and can we be and how what system can we be able to, in, to place to ensure that we have a continuous uh, pipeline of talent? 
So generally improving quality of education and link to industry is, is, is a good start. So that, you know, ensuring that the general education is accessible um, and is of good quality across board so that uh, and it's equitable and can be accessed by a big, for, by a large population. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter which career path you take, is you need to be able to um, have some very basic um, education and that education has to be linked to the socioeconomic realities. So currently we have the reality of technology and innovation taking a forefront. So as, as, a, as an education system, we need to be able to have innovation, entrepreneurship, risk-taking, critical thinking, and some of these fundamental um, you know, concepts uh, inculcated at an early stage. Uh, we have unlocking potential of TVETs and linking with industries. Um, again, um, TVETs uh, is a major, is a major uh, well, TVETs are designed to be very practical, to be very industry-driven. Uh, uh, but what we've seen in the last couple of years in Kenya, and I think maybe this uh, is being overturned, is there was a, a, a push to uh, towards you know making TVETs almost look like universities, uh, which made them lose their unique edge in terms of you know being able to churn out very practically, very industry ready um, uh, students or uh, yeah or candidates. So being able to look at that and ensuring that not only uh, do we focus on ICT as a course, but also trying to ensure that we are able to inculcate innovation and technology across the different uh, programs that are within TVET. Because of course, innovation is not an ICT only thing. It Innovation cuts across. And uh, being able to inculcate or integrate uh, uh, technology uh, you know, uh, across different programs within TVET and ensuring that it is linked with industry um, is something that um, uh, we need to focus on. And of course, we've seen government, especially the Kenyan government focusing um, around the same, looking at um, you know, recognition of prior learning where you know we have the Juakali people who uh, have learned through apprenticeship on the ground, but they don't have certificates. So being finding a framework of ensuring that they're able to recognize that and are able to upskill them. Um, I think that uh, that is very important. And of course, uh, other, other countries in Africa can be able to adopt uh, something very similar. So digitization program for informal sectors through linkage with startups. Again, uh, uh, this I, I had mentioned in terms of uh, looking at how can we be able to, um, you know, bridge the gap. So you can't take all SMEs to go to school to learn about digital tools. So there is an opportunity for designing programs that allows innovators and SMEs to sit uh, for them to be able to uh, innovate, uh, to help them. Uh, say, for example, in agriculture, can we be able to get, you know, farmers who are in rice, farmers who are doing goat, farming, etc., for them to use uh, simple tools. It could be uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, uh, bots uh, or something. Just, I mean, we, with with the two sitting together, uh, the opportunities are endless. So I think it's just a question of ESOs being able to design programs that, uh, you know, can be able to do that. And of course, this uh, the reason why this is important is because uh, currently we see, for example, in Kenya, ESO struggling, uh, because if you ask them why they're struggling is they they don't have uh, funding. Um, and what they're doing is they're waiting for um, a private sector or a, an NGO to come with a program where they can be able to run through their spaces. Um, the thing is when those funds dry, um, then it means you're going to you're going to struggle. So if the more you're able to focus on real problems, real challenges that face um, you know um, startups so that they're not solving things in the air waiting for an institutional investor to come, is if you're able to link them with uh, uh, with uh, with, a, with an SME or with an informal sector entrepreneur, uh, probably uh, either the government can come in um, or a private sector company can be able to come in, and over time you can be able to uh, you can be able to sustain your business. Of course, it's hard. It's not uh, uh, something that uh, you know is easy. It's uncharted waters, but I think uh, as Africa, we need to um, um, reach a point where we we just say enough, enough. Let's um, you know, let's focus on the things that really are ailing uh, our SMEs, our entrepreneurs, and our population, and try to solve them and find ways in which we can be able to um, finance uh, some of these programs. Um, digital capacity building programs in partnership with private sector. Again, that uh, that's an opportunity right there in terms of. Uh, being able to uh, build digital skills. So what skills are these? So based on the feedback that we received, uh, digital market uh, marketing is a top skill that is actually uh, highly needed. Again, because SMEs have a high mortality, uh, they want to be able to survive. So the, the easiest uh, opportunity for them is, can I be able to learn uh, more about digital marketing? How can I be able to position my product? How can I be able to position my business to ensure that I'm able to get more revenue? And of course, I can be able to survive and live another day. Data analysis and visualization, again, 
uh, very correlated to uh, digital marketing. You want not only to just uh, splash products, but you need to be able to uh, position yourself, uh, use data, uh, um, analyze that data to see how we can be able to convert um, customers. Can we be able to you know present yourself uh, amicably uh, within the digital space? So that's that's very important. Coding and programming uh, again, either this in terms of uh, b b bringing the competencies within the organization or being able to upskill. Uh, uh, different employees within the organization to be able to under to learn coding and programming. Uh, cloud computing is very important. Uh, uh, Cyber security as well as artificial intelligence and machine learning. So these are the top skills that uh, uh, SMEs that we interviewed uh, indicated that they would want to uh, they would want uh, they would want to have. So again, that's feedback for uh, different ESOs uh, to be able to use uh, you know uh, to uh, uh, design programs for SMEs. So from, from a policy and program support, uh, what, uh, and this is the question. Sorry, it seems to have, I might have dropped off. Um, sorry about that. Sorry. Um, yeah, so in terms of programs, um, so what types of programs would you uh, would SMEs want to see? Uh, I think the first one was financial incentives to encourage SMEs to uh, to uh, adopt digital tools. This is very similar to India, and we've seen India has or has been able to put up, up in place a, a, a financing product that allows for small businesses to be able to use and adopt uh, digital tech, uh, digital skills development programs. Uh, again, we've seen uh, Kenya's government, uh, uh, current uh, government, um, you know, prioritize digital uh, skills development uh, through, uh, you know, uh, developing of constituency-based hubs and being able to develop uh, different uh, uh, programs. Uh, like I said, I think in, 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 the, in the earlier slide around uh, skills is we need to be able to not only train on digital schools, uh, digital skills at the tail end or where people are adults, but we need to be able to look at the entire education system look at the different tenets of innovation that are needed and be able to uh, start inculcating that from an early and on stage uh, through universities or, or as, as well as to, uh, towards TVET. So that we are constantly building people who are um, who are digitally savvy, who are able to use different tools as, as, as they move along. Uh, of course, being able to uh, have digital innovation, innovation hubs that not only just teaches, but fosters collaboration between uh, uh, SME startups and as well as large enterprises. So the, what we see currently uh, in Kenya and in Africa is we see digital hubs as a startup only uh, space where you know startups can be able to access infrastructure, internet, uh, capacity building, investment, etc. I think what uh, would work for Africa, and again, this is based on uh, uh, on feedback that we see and based on uh, other studies that we have been able to, to see, is that um, um, we have Silicon Valley, we have different models that work uh, for, for different nations. But for Africa, we see, yes, we want to be able to innovate. Uh, but number one is we still have yet, yet to build the sufficient digital uh, infrastructure needed for us to be able to play at a global field in terms of, let's say, for example, being at the cutting edge of uh, fourth industrial revolution. So even as we do that, uh, as we as government tries to build infrastructure around the same, uh, we already have SMEs who are already struggling. And um, SMEs are already, uh, you know, uh, providing uh, 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 support towards the economy. Can we be able to help them increase their value even by two, three percent? You can imagine if if SMEs currently in Kenya are contributing thirty three percent to GDP. If you have to improve their efficiency or improve their turnover, uh, their contribution to GDP could move from thirty three percent to maybe even forty percent. Um, uh, you know, in terms uh, in terms of job uh, job creation, they employ. Uh, 30, 40 to 40 percent of the population. If we're able to support them to be able to expand, we are looking at uh, you know them increasing their capacity to be able to not only offer jobs but offer sustainable jobs. So there is a real opportunity for us to be able to, support, to do that by building innovation hubs that brings together SME startups as well as uh, uh, large um, enterprises. We have digital infrastructure development, I think, which is extremely important. Um, not only just the availability, but being affordable, being being affordable, um, and being accessible across across the country. So, if this becomes the foundation, um, and of course we we need to 
um, you know, Lord, the Kenyan government, which has focused on, let's say, for example, high speed fiber and ensuring that that fiber is, is accessible across the country. It's it's it might sound rudimentary, but it's foundational in terms of being able to give uh, opportunities to each and every person or each and every citizen access to Internet, of course, which would uh, allow them to be able to. Uh, you know, take opportunities uh, here and there. We have cloud infrastructure, which is of course related to uh, uh, to uh, to the internet. Again, the more we're able to build out this infrastructure, the easier it becomes for us to be able to adopt to to, uh, to the new um, era of uh, digital platform, digital technologies, um, public digital platform to help SMEs access markets. So there has been or there have been um, um, attempts by different stakeholders to be able to uh, develop. Uh, um, Jumias and e-commerces uh, of the world. Uh, the thing is, a, a lot of them uh, start, but they fail. Uh, you know, we I think uh, there was one that was built uh, uh, was developed for for SMEs at uh, Kariako, uh, not Kariako, but uh, Uhuru Textile Market. Again, can we be able to? Uh, there is need. Yes, we failed, uh, but there is still need for us to be able to look at an inclusive um, and accessible. Um, and uh, you know, user-friendly public park platform that allows SMEs to be able to aggregate their products and be able to sell to uh, to either uh, uh, corporate or individual markets, um, and being able to ensure that it uh, it is linked to corporates. And I, I mean, it's it, we we need to be able to uh, find a solutions around the same. And the reason why I say it's important is because a lot of SMEs in Kenya are a micro. So over ninety percent of businesses are are micro. So these are people who are do, who have turnovers of less than uh, you know 500k, 500,000 Kenya shillings, and they produce uh, you know of course the unit the unit cost of production is very high, uh, the adoption of uh, uh, tools machines is not as high is not is not is not as high, so we need to find a way in which we are able to aggregate some of these products uh, in a platform and allows them to be able to sell. That's the only way in which we can be able to sustainably uh, support SMEs and ensure that we build are able to build. Uh, uh, cooperatives around uh, SMEs and around products. So uh, this is something that uh, SMEs continue to yearn for. And of course, it's uh, the challenges or the ball is in the court of the different stakeholders to ensure that, um, you know, uh, this comes to comes to life. Uh, lastly, I think national government through the medium term plan four needs to look for ways in which it can be able to in, in, uh, incorporate and uh, deepen the, uh, the opportunities for digital economy. And the reason why I say this is if you look at uh, the budget policy statement for Kenya 2024, uh, it says digital superhighway as almost like the major uh, plan for government for the next one year to uh, support uh, digitization of SMEs. But you, as you can see, based on this study, is there other ways in which government can be able to explore, um, you know, a significant uh, adoption of SMEs, uh, of, of technology by SMEs. So there has to be a, a, a link between uh, the MSME a pillar that is under the ministry as well as ICT or the Ministry of ICT so that to ensure that uh, these two sectors are able to speak in a, in a manner that allows innovation to flow towards uh, the MSME space. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, our study around uh, uh, digitization of SMEs. Um, I hope that uh, has been insightful and again we are very open to feedback in terms of um, you know uh, what your experiences are and uh, what you think we can be able to incorporate to um, ensure that this study uh, resonates and is helpful to the entire ecosystem. So I would open up for questions, um, if any. Uh, it's uh, 9.53, uh, we can have maybe five or so minutes just for feedback, question and answer, then we can be able to close. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions or feedback? I would assume that uh, we are <laughs> we are satisfied. Uh, silence is always difficult to deal with, uh, but it's still feedback. Um, if there are no questions, then um, again, maybe I can just uh, give a vote of thanks. Uh, then 
close out the meeting. Okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for making the time. Uh, my name is Victor Otieno. I'm the managing director of VIFA Consult, uh, which is an SME as well as a startup research think tank. Uh, our, basically, our role is to be able to use evidence, use research, uh, to be able to inform programs that are designed around SMEs and as well as startups. And finally, our, our, our research is geared towards uh, supporting uh, alternative policy discourse and giving evidence for alternative policy conversations. Thank you very much and uh, have yourselves a good day.